Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to another Season 8 League of Legends Champion Guide. Today, I'll be covering mid lane Galio, the Colossus. Magic goes in, might comes out. Alright, so let's kick off this guide as per usual with the pros. So Galio is a pretty damn strong team fighter, and a lot of it comes from his ultimate, which is a really, really strong engaging ability. It has the potential to knock up the entire enemy team and also gives the target a ton of survivability. He's exceptionally strong against high AP teams because he does get some scaling from his magic resist and he's also got some pretty good wave clear which comes from his passive and his Q. All of this AoE damage makes farming on Galio rather simple. Now finally, Galio's a champion that also has a lot of different crowd controls. Of course, like I previously mentioned, he does have his ultimate, but he also has a really nice knockup on his E and a really solid AoE taunt from his W. Now Galio of course has his fair share of cons as well, and the first one is that he is pretty easy to poke. He's not the most mobile champion out there, of course he does have his E ability which allows him to engage, but other than that he will get poked over and over again throughout the lane phase. He's also not the most effective against high AD teams because usually Galio will want to build some magic resist because he does scale off of it. His Q ability also makes him a pretty mana hungry champion, he won't be able to sit throughout the lane phase spamming it over and over again, so you have to be very careful with the ability. Then finally, Galio is pretty immobile as well when his ultimate is on cooldown. Of course, this allows him to jump to targets, and he does have his E to leap forward, but other than that, Galio is fairly immobile. Either way though, he is a pretty solid champion, but he has his cons like everybody else. For your runes, you want to go for Resolve and Sorcery, grabbing Aftershock as your keystone. This will give you some really nice added burst damage whenever you immobilize a target, and also increase your defensives at the same time. You'll then want to follow up by getting Bone Plating for yet again a bit more tankiness, and then go for Chrysalis afterwards. This will give you 50 health in the early game, making you a little bit more durable, and whenever you do get 4 takedowns, you'll get more damage, which allows you to scale into the mid game. Then finally, I like to pick up Overgrowth so I get additional permanent max health from minions and monsters that die near me. Yet again, this will make you just a little bit more durable. Now as for the Sorcerer side, usually I'll go for Nullifying Orb and Transcendence. Nullifying Orb will grant you a magic shield whenever you get low health from magic damage. This is really strong against AP mid laners, but if you are against something like a Zed instead, then you could go for Mana Flow Ban just to help with mana issues. Either way, after that, I pretty much always go for Transcendence so I get 10% more cooldown reduction. This is really strong on Galio because usually you won't hit 40 from your items. For your first summoner spell, you'll want to pick up Flash. This is a really solid summoner spell because it can save you in all sorts of different situations and can also give you a really reliable engage. One really solid engaging combo is channeling your W, flashing onto the enemy, and then activating your W again to taunt the enemy and engage really easily on top of them. This can give Galio a ton of kill pressure whenever he does have flash off cooldown. Now as for your second summoner spell, I pretty much always take teleport. This is because Galio is not the most mobile champion out there, and if he does ultimate to a lane, it's going to take him a long time to get back to his own lane, and Teleport will help you with this. You could of course take something like Ignite instead if you wanted to snowball in the lane instead, but usually I would recommend sticking with Teleport. Now let's kick off his abilities with his passive, Colossal Smash. So this passive causes your next basic attack to deal additional damage to the target based on your AD, AP, and even your bonus magic resist. This deals magic damage to its target and everything around it, so it is some pretty nice AoE damage and is great for clearing through waves. The cooldown of this passive will also be reduced by 4 seconds every time Galio hits a unique enemy champion with an ability. That means as long as you're able to poke the enemy with your Q or engage onto them with your E or W, this can come off cooldown fairly quickly. It's a really solid passive because like I said it's great for clearing up minion waves and it also gives you some really nice additional damage into your burst combos when you engage onto an enemy. Now let's look at your Q ability, Winds of War. So when activated, Galio will fire two Wind Blasts that arc to either side before converging to the target area and deals magic damage to all enemies they pass through. When these meet, they'll form a tornado for 1.5 seconds that deals damage every 0.5 seconds. This ability does damage based on your AP ratio and your target's maximum health, so it can do a ton of damage even to tank your targets. Now this ability is your main source of damage outside of course of your auto attacks and your passive, so you definitely want to max this one first. Since of course it is a ranged ability, this can also allow you to last hit minions from a safe distance if you are in a very hard matchup. When you're trying to damage the enemy champion with it, however, you want to try to either engage with your E or your W to hold them in place and then use this on top of them so they can't get out and they have to take the damage. Now let's look at that W ability, Shield of Durand. Passively, Galio gains a shield that exclusively absorbs magic damage, refreshing after 12 seconds. 
This shield strength is based on its maximum health, which is why getting things like Eliantri's, Rod of Ages, and Morello Namicon are really solid on him because the shield gets stronger and stronger. On first cast, Galio charges for up to 2 seconds, increasing the radius, damage, and duration of the ability. He takes reduced damage based on his magic resist and his AP ratio, and is also slowed by 30%. On second cast, Galio refreshes his own damage reduction for 2 seconds and taunts nearby enemies and sets their movement speed to a static 60 for between 0.5 and 1.5 based on charge time, seconds. So this here is a really nice ability because the shield is great throughout the lane phase at trading because you will be able to absorb all sorts of damage. The activation is great in both defensive and offensive situations because it will give you a lot of damage reduction and also taunt the enemy. So in those team fights, of course you want to try to channel this as much as you can to get all that damage reduction, but if you have to, use a quick channel just to hold somebody in place and get off your Q. Now let's look at that E ability, Justice Punch. When you activate the ability, Galio will step backwards and then charge forwards and he'll stop upon hitting terrain or an enemy champion and deal magic damage to all the enemies hit and knock them up for 0.75 seconds. So this here is a fairly strong ability because it is a knock-up and a dash, allowing you to engage and hold somebody in place to easily get off your Q. Although it is a really nice ability and it does have a 90% AP ratio, it's still not as strong as our Q or our W, so we do have to max this one last. Either way, it's a really solid engage tool and you can also use it as an escape, although it's not the greatest one out there because you do move backwards first. And finally, that brings us to the ultimate, Hero's Entrance. So when you activate it, Galio designates the target allied champion's location at the cast time for his landing spot. He then channels for 1.25 seconds, then dashes to them, reducing the damage they will take until he lands. This reduced damage also has a magic resist ratio as well, giving you even more magic resist scaling. Either way, upon impact, Galio deals magic damage to all nearby enemies and knocks them up for 0.75 seconds, increased to 1.25 seconds at the center of the impact zone. So of course this ability has the potential to be incredibly strong because if you can stun all 5 members of the enemy team, you're going to have a very, very successful team fight. You'll be able to channel your W as soon as you land and hold people in place for a very, very long duration. Therefore, this is mostly a way to engage, but you can always use it as a way to escape as well. If you do get caught in a bad position, you can always use this on an ally that is somewhat near you to jump away and hopefully survive. For your skill order, you first want to focus on putting a point to your ultimate whenever you can at 6, 11, and 16. Then focus on maxing your Q ability as quickly as possible because this is your main harassing tool and it's great at last hitting minion waves. Then next, focus on maxing your W ability second because it is a really solid taunting ability that is also a great defensive. So that of course means you want to save your E ability for last, but you definitely want to point in this ability at level 3 because it is a really solid engaging tool and it's also pretty decent as an escape. Now I'm going to cover a couple of his combos, and first up is the Quick Burst combo. To do this combo, you want to E into the enemy and auto attack them right when you get there, activate your Q and use a really quick W to hold them in place, and then auto again. This will get off your damage really really quickly, and that fast activation of your W will help hold people in place to get off the damage from your Q. The next combo is fairly similar, but instead we channel a full W and use our Q afterwards to hold people in place. For this combo, yet again you want to E into the enemy and auto attack them when you get there, activate your W and channel it fully, and then use your Q and auto attack them once again. This combo was not as quickly to pull off because of the channel W, but it does hold people in place for a longer duration, and you'll definitely get every single tick of your Q. For the last combo here, I've got the Flash Engage. For this combo, you want to start channeling your W, flash onto the enemy, activate your W a second time, and then Q auto. This is a really strong combo on Galio whenever you have your flash off cooldown because you engage onto an enemy really really quickly, hold them in place for a really long duration, and get off a lot of damage. Once you do this combo, you can then E afterwards if needed to hold them in place even longer. When laning, you'll first of course want to focus on farming. Galio is a champion that pretty much always rushes a rod of ages, so you need it as quickly as possible to get it stacking so you can scale well into that mid game. Keep in mind, both your Q ability and your passive do AoE damage so they're really strong at wave clearing and can get you a lot of farm. The other main part of the lane phase, of course, is trading. You will want to try and poke the enemy as much as you can with your Q ability Winds of War because it does a pretty significant amount of damage. Now this ability, however, is pretty easy to dodge so you will want to try to hold people in place with either your W ability or your E ability to make sure you get off that damage. Other than that, of course you want to make sure you keep your lane warded as much as possible, and if your ultimate is off cooldown, you want to try to roam with it because it's very very strong in ganks. A lot of team fighting on Galio is mostly about finding a good opportunity to use your hero's entrance. It can give a squishy teammate a ton of survivability and also has the potential to crowd control an entire enemy team. A really well placed hero's entrance alone can easily win your team a fight. 
Now, other than that, you'll pretty much just want to try to get on top of targets with your Justice Punch and crowd control targets as well with your W, Shield of Durant. Whenever you do land one of these, of course you'll want to combo your Passive's Punch and of course your Q on top of it. Now let's look at some of your hard matchups, and first up is Anivia. Now Anivia is pretty hard for you because she does an insane amount of damage and scales really really well into the late game. Her walling ability is also really really strong against Galio because of course your E ability stops at terrain, so if she uses it quickly enough it will stop your E and you'll be stuck there and pretty much screwed. She'll follow up with the rest of her kit and you'll take a lot of damage for nothing, so be very careful whenever her wall is available. Another hard matchup for you will be Annie. She has some pretty decent ranges and her auto attack has a very very long range for a mage, so she'll be able to poke you out throughout the game. She also has a tremendous amount of burst which is even hard for you to deal with as a Galio. Therefore, just try and make it through the lane phase and build your magic resist to deal with her later on. Then next up, I've got Kale. Kale is another champion that has some pretty decent ranges and can definitely harass you out of the lane phase. Part of her damage is attack damage and part of it is ability power so she's also very hard to deal with because you can't really build one defensive item. Once you get your Rod of Ages and a couple defensive items, you will be pretty decent against the Kale, but until that point, just play safe and farm with your Q. And for the last hard matchup, we've got the King of Long Range Harassment, Xerath. He's going to be very annoying for you to deal with because his ranges are a hell of a lot longer than yours and he will be poking you the entire lane phase. Just try to get as much farm as you can with your passive and your Q and get that Rod of Ages and build some damn magic resist. Until that point in the game, he's going to be very, very frustrating to play against, so just try to survive the lane. Now with all that covered, let's look at the item build, which starts with a Dark Seal, Refillable Potion, and a Warding Totem. You could of course go for a Doran's Ring and some Health Potions instead, but usually I find I get a lot more out of the Dark Seal and the Refillable Potion. Of course, if you do go for these starting items, you always have the option of upgrading that Refillable into a Corrupting Potion as well, to just get a little bit more sustain. Now for my core items, I like to go for Rod of Ages, Morello Nomicon, and Azonias. The Morello Nomicon here is replaceable, you could get a Leandries against a tankier team, or you could go for something like a Ludens if you wanted an extra burst, but usually I think I get a lot more from the Morello. Either way, you'll first want to go for the Rod of Ages because it gives you some really nice sustain, tankiness, and ability power, which works great with your W. Then pick up the Morello Nomicon because it gives you ability power as well, and it gives you some nice health, making your health pool pretty damn decent at this point in the game, and it also gives you that nice Grievous Wounds. Then finally, for a defensive option, I like to pick up the Zonius Hourglass because the stasis is incredibly strong, and you get some really nice armor. Now in between those core items, of course you want to pick up some boots. You'll basically always want to go for a defensive option, and you want either the Ninja Tabbies or the Merc Treads. Both are really solid options, if you're against a high AD team I'd pick up the Ninja Tabbies, but against high AP and CC heavy teams I'd go for Merc Treads. Now for the item pool, you first have the Leandries Torment. This is a really strong item on Galio because yet again you get some ability power and health, but it also has a really nice burn on it as well, which is great against the tankier teams. If instead you were against a pretty squishy team and you wanted additional burst, you could always go for Ludens Echo. It will give you some pretty nice additional damage into your burst combos and can really allow you to 100-0 somebody. If we're instead going for the defensive side of things, you could get an Abyssal Mask. This is a really nice item on Galio because you get some nice health pool and magic resist, but it also increases your damage, making it a fantastic all-around item on Galio. If you then wanted to pick up a little bit of armor, you could always get a Frozen Heart. This also lowers the attack speed of enemies around you, making it really really strong against attack speed heavy champions, and you will also get 20% cooldown reduction, which is fantastic on Galio. Then you could always pick up a Banshee's Veil as well, it gives you some really nice ability power and it also allows you to block a spell which is great against all ending champions like Fizz that want to try to engage with their ultimate. Now in this gameplay I was screwing around with the Hextech Proto Belt, it's also a pretty damn strong item, I don't really consider it in the item pool, but it's fun to screw around with. Of course if you wanted to be a really tanky Galio, all of the other defensive options are also very viable. Now for my example full build, I like to take the Rod of Ages, then I choose my boots, get the Morello Nomicon, Zonias, a Leandries, and an Abyssal Mask. This will give you a lot of ability power, so you'll do a lot of damage for a tanky mid laner, you'll also have some nice armor and magic resist, and a pretty damn high health pool. You'll be a lot more durable than the majority of mid laners out there, but you'll also do some pretty damn significant damage. And that's all I've got for mid lane Galio. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and visit my video description below. I have a link to all my social medias and I do also have a discord server so that's one you should definitely check out. But other than that, thank you guys a ton for watching, I really do appreciate it, so take it easy, have a good day, and peace.